what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will continue with the discussion on Bhagavad Gita we discussed on the first chapter the first six verses and in that we saw the war of Kurukshetra has come to the climax and it is about to begin and Duryodhana is going to Dronacharya the king uh, the his teacher the royal teacher who trained everybody in the battlefield on the account of informing him and acknowledging the power of his enemy and he listed out the different personalities who are present on the side of the Pandavas, their enemies. So now we will start with the seventh verse and we'll continue from there. Now in this what is happening is <coughs> Duryodhana is going to Dronacharya and he listed the enemy's strength and now he's going to list his own strength, the strength of his generals, the strength of his powerful men who are present to give their lives for him, for the side of the Kurus. And by that we will see how he tries to convince Dronacharya and other people that yes, we are also powerful. They are powerful but we are more powerful. <laughs> this is a adventurism or a self-aggrandizement as you call it. Alright, before we begin, let's go with the prayer. Om Agyan Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Alright, the seventh verse is as follows. Asma kam tu vishishtate tan nibodha dvijottama Dvijottama is drona. Nayaka mama senyasa Samagnyatham tan bravimite now let us read the translation. But for your information, who is telling this? Duryodhana is telling to his teacher, Dronacharya. But for your information, O best of the Brahmanas, let me tell you the captains who are especially qualified to lead my military force. So he is going to describe the great personalities who are there on his side. So let's go to the next, next verse, the eighth verse. And now he starts describing the personalities one by one. Bhavan Bhismascha Karanascha Kripascha Samititim Jaya Ashwatthama Vikaranascha Saumadattis Tathaivacha So these are different personalities who are there on his side which he is describing. Translation. There are personalities like you, Bhavan. Bhavan refers to a very, it is a very respectable address to a personality. Bhavam, Tuam. Tuam is more of an equal response. They may call a friend like saying Tuam. But when we say Bhavan, it means it is a reference to a very great personality or a person who is very much powerful. That is why he is using the word Bhavan, which means he is addressing Dronacharya as a very great personality. See, he is very, he's very intelligent in these regards. We should learn from him actually. <laughs> Bhavan Bhishmascha. There are personalities like you, Dronacharya, then Bhishma. Bhishma was the grandfather. And Karna. Karna was not there in the battlefield for the first 10 days till Bhishma was the commander. But he is still referring to him because he knows that if anything happens to Bhishma, Karna can come. Bhishma had not allowed Karna to take part in the war and Karna was his best friend, his biggest support of his illusory ideas which he had about ruling the world. Karna always used to fuel them unnecessarily in account of the so-called friendship which he had with Duryodhana. And then there is Kripa, who is Kripachari? He is the priest of the dynasty. He is Kripachari who is like the family priest of their tradition. like. For example, in case of Lord Ram, Vashishth Muni was the family priest. <laughs> and then there is Ashwatthama. Who is Ashwatthama? Ashwatthama is Dronacharya's son. He is also extremely powerful. Vikarna. Who is Vikarna? Vikarna is Duryodhana's brother. And the son of Somadatta called Bhurishava. He is also extremely powerful. Who are always victorious in battle. All right. 
Now the purport to the eighth verse is like this. Duryodhana mentions the exceptional heroes in the battle. Yes, they were all exceptional. There is no doubt about it. All these personalities. All of whom are ever victorious. See, ever victorious. Vikarna is the brother of Duryodhana. Ashwatthama is the son of Dronacharya. And Somadatti or Bhurishrava, the son of the king of Bahalikas. Karna is the half-brother of Arjuna and he was born from Kunti before her marriage with King Pandu. Kripacharya's twin sister married Dronacharya. And Kripachari, the family priest, his sister had married Dronacharya. So Dronacharya was the husband of Kripacharya's sister. And there are mention of people like Somadatta, Bhulishrava, Bahalika. These are exceptionally powerful warriors. And Karna is the half brother of Arjuna, as it's mentioned, because Karna is the son of Kunti and the sun god. We will discuss about Karna later. Now, let's go to the next verse, to the ninth verse, because the, there, there, there is not much explanation in these verses. I am uh, going to the next verses also. So, I hope you understood what. Is mentioned in these verses the different personalities who are on the side of Duryodhana that is mentioned and it is also mentioned they are ever victorious in battle that means there is no perhaps there is no account of their defeat in the hands of the enemy then the ninth verse is as follows Anicha Bhavaha Sura Mad Arthe Tyaktva Jivita Nana Shastra Tarharana Sarve Yuddha Vishradha. There are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down. See, this is funny. There are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. And all of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons. And all are experienced in military science. Why I am smiling is because if you read the purple. As far as the others are concerned, which means he's now referring to the other prominent warriors who were also very strong. But these people who he mentioned earlier were exceptionally powerful. And the others are also very powerful. That's what he's mentioning here. As far as the others are concerned, like Jayadrat. Jayadrat was his the Jayadrat was the husband of his sister Dushala. His brother-in-law, as you say. Then Kritavarma was the commander-in-chief of the Narayani Sena, the army of Lord Krishna, who, which was there on Duryodhana's side. And Lord Krishna was there on the side of the Pandavas that we all know by being charioteer of Arjuna. So Kritavarma was the commander-in-chief of the Narayani Sena, of the army of the Yadus. And Shalya, Shalya was from South India. He was also extremely powerful. He is actually the uncle of Nakul and Sehdev, but due to some reason Duryodhana tricked Shalya and forced him to join the army of the Kurus rather than going and joining the army of the Pandavas. And then it's written that all are determined to lay down their lives for Duryodhana say now I will come to this. In other words, listen carefully, in other words it is already concluded that all of them would die in the battle of Kurukshetra for joining the party of the sinful Duryodhana. <laughs> this is too good. Duryodhana was of course confident of his victory on the account of the above mentioned combined strength of his friends. So in this shloka he is mentioning of his friends and then in the previous shloka he mentioned about his seniors. Okay. So, it seems he is very confident that my friends will lay down my life for me and my seniors will give me victory. Especially people like Dronacharya and Bhishma who are invincible. Nobody could defeat them. And now he is telling all the others also are ready to lay down their lives for me. So, indirectly it is like the God speaking through him. So, indirectly what it is happening is he is himself declaring that Everybody is going to die. <laughs> they are going to lay down my, their lives for me, which means they are going to be slain, which means I will be defeated. 
so that's the funny part here yeah and now later he will talk of Bhishma and that we will continue later so to summarize what did he say in these verses he said our captains are also no less so he is actually what Duryodhana is trying to do he is trying to very in a very tricky way he is trying to show that okay the enemy has these people but we have more power our strength is much more than theirs so this is a very good technique he is using to cheer up the forces on his side by telling them that don't worry nothing is lost you are still powerful we will still win but indirectly he is also hinting that you all are going to die <laughs> and in that he mentions different personalities about whom we discussed okay if you have any questions queries comments then let me know in the comments and section and if you are new to the channel then subscribe to it until next time bye bye see you